the sun, women has so many problems because the men, when they saw us, they thought it's shame for girls to ride bike. They decided it's not good for us because we are Muslim. My father and my mother, they spoke with my, my uncles and the others because they decided to stop me. But uh, when uh, my mother spoke with them, and then they support me. So there were two girls who were leading the cycling movement in Bamiyan, uh, Zara and Zakia. The two of these girls started riding bikes. Um, they were teaching their friends to ride bike, not for sport at first, but simply to have transportation to and from school, just like their male friends did. The community was really supportive of them riding publicly. And so both Zara and Zaki eventually created a both a men's and a women's team in Bamiyan and eventually founded the first races for Afghan women. And that was like female led, female grown, you know, developed by these two young women who were 18 at the time, maybe, and just filtering that through. And the, the entire community would come out for these races. So men were cheering women racing, and that was unheard of. The, the day Kabul fell, I was inundated with messages on social media of girls erasing their social media presence, uh, burning cycling gear, burning diplomas, universities burning documents. And what it felt like was this complete erasure of Afghan women in society, you know, self-identifying their own erasure at a time that they had achieved so much. In one day, we saw all of that go backwards. So thank you. I spoke to Shannon and to Amy. So we need to find out if you could ask them, can we get them to the airport? The Germans have apparently flights. I think we got them on the list. Um, the problem is now how to get to the airport. You've seen the news. It's hard mm -hmm. to get there. There's uh, lots of trouble. So Zakia has asked me, can, shall they go? And I said, they shall not go because the recommendation from the government is they shouldn't go. So please check, can we get transport to the airport with Amy? Mm -hmm. On the legal side, have you checked? There's no cause for reunification of the family, so we... <coughs> we checked, since they are um, um, not children anymore, it's, there's not a possibility to use this option. But I think the Germans, uh, they set up um, a new way, a not so bureaucratic way, um, so that we will try to, um, yeah, take this road. Okay, so uh, I will write to Mars again. Mm -hmm. um, if you can also contact the Munich uh, mayor again mm -hmm. to see if they are willing to take them. If they are, they, I could mention that to the foreign ministry. And the federal office uh, for the interior. Yeah, so that yeah, has yeah. To okay. There. Mm -hmm. Let's contact them too. I came to Europe by a sport program and uh, me and two other girls, we choose the, from all of Afghanistan. And then we went to Finland and then uh, Austria. And uh, last night I spoke with my mother back of the phone. She cried so much and uh, she told me, please, don't come back to Afghanistan. And I asked why. She told me, I heard somebody wants to kill you. Please don't come back. If you, want, if you can run out, run out. When I came here from Austria to Germany, all the way, I cried so much and uh, I don't have anything. I leave all things there. It's 
Sakya and the other girls who founded the cycling clubs were very well known in Afghanistan. They used their uh, athlete work for activism. And so um, Sakya's father in particular was known for allowing his girls to bike. And that was something that endangered him. So very early after the Taliban took over, they heard rumors that the Taliban were watching out for Sakya's father to get him. Uh, later on, some weeks later, um, Raihana, the 18-year-old sister, got text messages on her phone with a photo even from a Taliban who said, uh, if we find you, we kill you. So pretty much from the beginning, I reconnected with Zakia and I have been in contact with her every single day, multiple times a day thinking that we would be able to get them out in a couple of weeks. And very quickly we saw that the chaos of the evacuation was never, it was never an evacuation for Afghans. It was a blockade. And Zakia's family was stuck, you know, on the other side of this blockade, despite being from an incredibly high profile um, family, um, that they are Hazara. They are, you know, targeted and at risk but we couldn't get them out for nearly three months. On that time, when bomb attack is, uh, happened, uh, my parents, my family, is near the gate of uh, airport. But uh, fortunately, they were in a home, just waiting for you know, open the gate to enter the airport. When I heard that, I was so worried because I thought my family is on a mobile thing. And your life is end. It is stop. And I remember her near hysterical the day that the airport closed. Because I think every Afghan believed that that was it. The airport's closed and so everybody's going to walk away. And trying to convince her that no, like, we're not done, we're not done. This isn't over until we get your family out. They can't see this invisible team that is spread out across time zones that are working for their family. So over the weekend, we have set up an operations team um, in order to get the Pakistan visa and to tr cross the border. So with Amy's help, we have this team. Um, we need to inform the family that someone named Red Monkey will call them. And he will say Red and they then need to say monkey, right? Mm -hmm. That's very important. Then they need to give this person their passports. He will procure the visa for Pakistan. And if we find an opening, we just let the team know and they bring, him, bring them across. And so um, this morning here, see what the Germans mm -hmm. say, the talk home seems open right now. So I give them a go. Okay, so tomorrow 4 a.m. is what they say. They will go from Kabul to Tokham Gate. And I just hope everything will work out fine. They will send a team on the other side, so just in case they can pass, they bring them to Islamabad. Okay. But um, they, they will also stay in the shadow watching them while they cross the border. If something goes wrong, they run up and get them back. years I couldn't see my family and uh, when I heard that they arrived in Germany uh, <laughs> I know how to explain that but fortunately we we did it now we will join together 
like to awesome. with saffron. Mm -hmm. <laughs> When this case came along, I felt that's one where I can make a difference because I saw it was not about the law so much. It was about using all your abilities. Crisis management is one thing that I do in my daily work. And I knew how the people who do crisis management tick and how you can go to them and, and try to find practical solutions and ways to operate rather than just looking at the letter of the law and I wanted to make a difference and we have made a huge difference to this family. Their life has changed and their fate has changed. It is a very different story to be representing an individual at risk uh, than a company. It's a very different uh, ball game. The decisions you have to take are about life and death potentially and you have to bring all of yourself to the case with all of your empathy, all of your heart, and sometimes your tears, because otherwise you are not in a position to help. And so for me, the reward is really the purpose and the, the change you can make. But also for Hogan Lovells, it is an experience that all of our people and our lawyers can have that is incredibly fulfilling if you bring back something to your society. And pro bono at Hogan Lovells has been important for many, many, many years that we want to be a firm who gives back to society. And, um, but I think individually, everyone can really grow from those experiences. I'm so glad. And without your helping yourself, it couldn't be done. It's it needed an army, though, with Shannon and Amy and all, all you people, and everybody. That's all government. That's, uh, and <laughs> I don't know how to thankful for that, all of you. And it's, but no. Yeah. But you don't have to thank us for us. It's it, thanks enough that it worked and that we, we could share with you and your family these moments. That was for all of us. I mean, we will not be the same again after that, after having seen that and mm -hmm. been through this time with you. My uh, middle, um, 
other uncle, he told me, Zakia, you won. Oh, 